Mm. All right, all right. Excuse me one moment. Let me make sure. Because I'll be honest, sometimes this be wacky. Um, hmm. What's going on? Let's see, let's see. Can you hear me in the back? Where the chat at? I don't see the chat. Yo, this be doing some weird stuff. I promise you. All right. All right. Let's see. I think this is on YouTube, right? It should be. Hold on. Un momento. And we kick it off. I just want to make sure this thing is out there. We kick it. And I don't see myself. I don't see it working. Is it working? This is bugged out. I'm okay. 18 people watching. All right, all right. Chat is up in here. Yo, what's up? <laughs> all right. I really don't like this new layout with what YouTube's doing. I don't know. It's just weird. It was so much. I'm telling you, man. It's so much easier with Hangout. But, all right. I'm seeing this. Everything's hitting up. I, everything's hitting up nicely. Maybe it takes a couple of seconds to warm up. I don't know. What the hell? I can't really explain it. But now everything just popped up and everything's just hitting. Everything's just hitting stride. All right. So we're good. All right. So let me let me do this. Let me close this out. All right, so everything's hitting up. Everything's hitting up. The stride, whatever. All right. Got my peoples coming through. Shout out to the chat. All right, do me a solid. Hit this out through your social, through your favorite social media platform. Hit the like button. Tweet this out. Let people know to yo. Let's rock out in the chat and stuff. Um. Let me see. My man said, yo, you good. Don't change a thing. All right. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Um, let me see something. Uh, um, J-Dub, you, you, you in my Discord, right, J-Dub? You should be in my Discord. Right? I think I gave you rights already. If not, let me know. But I think I, I think I got you on my Discord. I sent that. Let me see. Yeah, you are. And I think you have the rights, right? I think you have. Yeah, you could. You have, Yeah, you got rights. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because you could hop in anytime you want and stuff like that. Um, but let me do my thing real quick. Where is it at? Uh, hold up. Let me see something. There we go. That's the one I was looking for. Yo, this is crazy right here. All right, let me let me let me send this out. Let me send this out to uh, all my peeps in Twitter. Let me let me just spread the love, get the family together, get my my fan my friends, my family, my fellow gamers. You know how we do. We're gonna talk about this, right? But you know, out here, I always preach the truth, right? On Twitter. <laughs> I be doing the most, all right? Let me see. I be doing the most on Twitter. Yesterday I was on Zaire's last, you know, ad hoc podcast with, you know, with Gary and the crew. I had to show out. You know what I'm saying? I, ha I, have, to ha I have to show my flair for the theatrics, right? All right, with...
All right, here we go. Excuse me, I'm just typing some quick stuff on Twitter. Got that out there. All right, all right, all right. You're gonna learn the date. Man, so much shit you gotta do. Okay, boom. Got it out there. I tweeted it out. Retweet it. Yo, Lionel, let me let me just go back. All right, but I see, oh man, people with the super chat. All right, so let me start out the super chat real quick, show some respect, and then I'll shout out the chat. You know, my man Kaiser says, did you hear Naughty Dog will be at the Madrid Gaming Conference on October 3 to 5 to showcase a deep dive of The Last of, uh, the Last of Us Part 2? I had no idea. I didn't even know Madrid had a gaming conference. Damn, and I'll be in Norway around that time. Shit. Man, I would love to be there. And shout out for that knowledge, man. Thank you for the super chat. But I'm going to look into that. Man, I would have I loved to take a trip out to Spain real quick. That would have been dope. All right, my man, my man Lionel, yo, Porter Rock, I saw you ethering hard eight on Twitter. Live mouth, you still got it, yo, <laughs> dudes. I don't know. Here's the thing all I do is talk shit and pop jokes, you know, some facts about gaming and stuff like that. But dudes want to do the most on Twitter, they want to do the most, they want to. Over, over conversations of games, talk shit of games. And it's not like they haven't done it either. That's the funny part. You look at the shit, their Twitter timelines, you look at what they've done on their channels. They talk shit about games too, plastic too. They make comments about sales of games or this doesn't matter, whatever. Don't you notice the people who say, oh, why are you talking about this? They've done it themselves as well, right? So they come in to my timeline because I ain't looking at their shit. I leave them alone, whatever, you know, because it's clear, you know what I'm saying, certain people don't want to, oh, shit, the little bug. some people don't want to fuck with one another, which is cool, whatever, right? Cool. But they come on my timeline, and they think, yo, you would think they will learn by now, if you start some shit, I will come, I will clap back hard, and it will be relentless. It will hurt your feelings. You will, you will run away. And they keep coming back like a battered wife. Sometimes I think they like the shit. I think they like my attention. I, I don't know. It's just weird. You know what I'm saying? But dude had to get ether. Don't come on my timeline. I don't fuck with him. I don't say shit to him. You know? That's it. But he wants to try to do the most. And then he get slapped. I don't know. Yo, J-Dub. Yo, Simply What's Up, Lay. Thank you for rocking out. Lionel, of course, Eddie Brock, you know what I'm saying? Physical versus digital, yeah, that's kind of leading to a whole thing, yeah. Xbox has no games, laugh at all, Xbox success. <laughs> Yo, Christopher was good, Black God. Yo, what's going on? Ice Queen Gaming, what is going on? Thank you so much, Mama, for showing up. You know what I'm saying? General was good, Rudy, what's up? Aye, you know what I'm saying? My man Cubano, the Caribbean, Latino, what's good? You know what I'm saying? Only the illest. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Oni, you from like New York City? You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know. The name sounds so New York. You know what I'm saying? Mad Makishimu. Hello. What's going on? Link and Clay? Yo, hit me up with that new channel. You did not link me to your new channel, bro. So I'm so disappointed. I'm trying to support you. Help me help you. All right? Help me help you. Hey, right. Hellspawn Ray, what's going on? How you doing? Thank you for rocking out. Cal Eaton, what's up? Support gaming, definitely, as always. All right. I'm going to say Dewan. I can't say your first name, but what's up? Alex, what's good? You know, your hero, what's up? Damn, everybody's rocking out. 
We got 100 in the chat. Please tell me there's at least 70 likes. Hit the like button. Hook a brother up. You know, give it some habu. You know what I'm saying? What habu is? Habu? Hook a brother up. You know what I'm saying? But everybody out here, everybody rocking. PlayStation fan view. All right? Everybody's here. I'm glad, you know, I hope everybody's having a safe week. You know what I'm saying? Family, good times. You know, enjoy this coming weekend. I hope you guys enjoyed the summer because it's over. It's over. But at least we got Halloween, holidays, all that good stuff, right? Rome Rush, Free Flow. You know what I'm saying? Who else we got up here? Chris Righteous. Sage, Darkling, Dolphin Fan. Oh, my God. Brother, I feel... Hey, we both 0-2. I'm a Giants fan. We both 0-2, all right? But, God damn, them Dolphins, though. <laughs> like, yo. Holy shit. Them Dolphins are getting treated worse than SeaWorld. Oh, my God. Todd Smith. Oh, man, I feel so bad. Yo, give a shout out. Give some love to Dolphin Fan. Oh, my God. I feel so bad for you right now. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Doss is up in here. Yo, damn, everybody's up here. Frog Dreams was good. The true OG, 23K being quoted for Gears 5 UK so is incorrect. It's actually over 16K compared to Gears 4, 7, 3. Really? We're about to talk about that. It's all good. Tanking for two, a baby. <laughs> I don't know. You're gonna have a you're gonna have to battle that with the Giants. <laughs> Cause we don't know, we're not looking too hot either. <laughs> Oh, shit, King Vega, what's good, man? We got 100 in the chat. Shout out to everybody. Thank you so much. So let me kick it off. Your only friend in these YouTube streets back live. Your boy, Porter Rock 77. Oh, man, hold on. Let me see. Uh, yeah, so. All right. Got to make sure. All right. So anyway. So, of course, we're going to talk about a little bit of gears. We're going to talk about the 3 million player count. You know what I'm saying? My man, Pats Nation, I can't stand you guys. Oh, my God. I can't stand Patriots. I can't stand Patriots and Dallas. Oh, my God. I hate you guys so much. Like, if, like God forbid, if the next Super Bowl is Patriots versus Dallas, I hope Bane comes and blow that fucking stadium up into a goddamn sinkhole. At that, hell, I might be Bane. As soon as the kickoffs are, or as soon as Brady's on the field, I'm blowing that shit up. Everybody's getting bodied. I refuse to see that more. I refuse to allow a Patriots Dallas Super Bowl. That is not happening. I'm blowing that shit up. Bow, I'm going to come in with the mask. What a beautiful singing voice. This is done. It's done. I'm, I'm not playing. I'm not. That, that, I am not allowing that. I'm not allowing that. Right? <laughs> yeah, I better take my passport and, not allow me, and don't have me come back to America. Because that's not happening. I will not subject America to a Patriots Dallas Super Bowl. That is just not right. We don't deserve that. <laughs> we deserve better. <laughs> I can't. Cannot do it. For all dreams, we got to get you on the show, Ultra Peace at Podcast. Yo, hit me up. You know, in the DM, bro, all right? But just remember, I'm in Europe. I am six hours ahead of East Coast time, all right? So keep that in mind. Like, so if you do a podcast on a weekday, and it's like in the middle of the morning, late at night, like two, three in the morning, then I have to, it has to be, I'll let you know, like, if I have, like, the day off next day or some stuff like that. So just keep that in mind. You know, I know a lot of people send me invites, and I have to decline them, but it is not because I don't want to be in your podcast. I would love to be on every podcast that I could, you know, back in the East Coast when I was in, you know, living in North Carolina, I was, you know, jumping on a lot of podcasts. But the timing aligned, you know, the majority of the podcasts are American podcasts, right? Oddly enough, there's not a, at least that I noticed, a lot of European podcasts, or at least that I've seen and stuff like that, right? So, again, so from East Coast, I'm six hours ahead. So, so right now, yes, it's 9.30 p.m. where I'm at right now. So, picture that. For you guys in the East Coast, it's 3.30 p.m., if you're on the West Coast, it's 12.30 p.m., right? It's 9.30 for me. So when you guys have your 9 o'clock podcast, it's like 3 in the morning, and I got to wake up at 5, you know? So it's a killer. So that's the only reason why. So I don't want people to think that I wouldn't support their podcast, or I don't want people to think anything weird. I'll go, I'll just hop on a podcast that only has one subscriber and one whatever, you know? It's all good, you know? I'm out there because I've been there, too. You know, I've been there, too, Um 
when I only had like seven people viewing my stuff. I've been there, you know? And again, again, at the end of the day, whatever podcast is on, it's all about talking games. So I have no issues talking games and stuff like that, right? So, but definitely, man, hit me up in the DMs. Let me know when you have it, and we'll do our thing, you know? But I appreciate it. All right, so let's get it. So let's start with Gears 5, right? My view. So I beat Gears 5 like two or three days ago. I sent a Twitter picture. Uh, I completed the campaign on experience mode, which is one under insane mode or insanity. Um, do you wake up at five though? Yeah, I do. I mean, I gotta, yeah. So I got a PT in the morning. I got to work out. It's the whole Marine thing. Um, so, uh, damn. Okay. So I beat the game in experience mode. I didn't do insanity mode cause I wanted to save that for co-op, but we'll talk about that in a few. I want to save that mode cause I think the highest difficulty would be better playing it with other people, right? So I wanted to save that experience with other people. But I did play by myself for experience mode. I wanted something harder than normal mode, right? So I played it through that, right? Uh, overall, good game. My overall score, 8.5 um, is a solid score, right? I played a little bit of multiplayer just to see it out. It still gives a war multiplayer, right? But overall, it's a good package, good mode. But mostly, I'm focusing on the single player. Um, overall, it's a good single player, all right? Do I give it a game of the year? No. I'm not going to give it like a game of the year, not. I, but what I do give it is it's a good, solid single player campaign, right? The gun battles are good. You know, I enjoy the gameplay. It's smooth. So the 60 frames, if you played all the gears, because I played all the gears before, you can tell a difference. The 60 frames does make a difference. It is just a smooth experience. Some of you who play these games on PC, obviously, you always play that 60 or higher. So you're always used to it, but on consoles, uh, Gears was normally 30. 60 frames does make a difference. It's definitely a smoother experience, all right? Um, overall, it's a good style of games, good shooting up. I like the open world section. I like it because it's potential, all right? They didn't make the open world too big, so it was easy to get around, right? Not a lot of stuff within those acts of the open world but again it's not too big so you could quickly go from place to place knock out the little areas and keep it moving right act three kind of dragged a little bit for me but not too bad act four picked it up again for me but overall good solid game good gunplay good gameplay um i played it on the halo one terabyte edition i didn't play on the xbox one x i don't have the xbox one x don't plan to get another xbox period at this point right but overall for the game right um graphics again from the perspective of the xbox one right of course if you play on the one x you play on pc totally different but i will say this the open world doesn't have variety in the sense of the unique like for example the level that's all ice that's all it is it's just ice and ice nothing unique it's just repetitive looks beautiful but it's it's a simple it's a simplistic design Act 3 is like the desert. It's just desert. You know, so... So, it will be a disservice if you try to compare it to Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon Zero Dawn is a fully open world. And as you travel, you travel through the jungle. And then as you travel, you'll end up in the snowy mountains. And you keep traveling, you're in the desert. And you keep traveling, you're in the rocky mountains. And it's all rendered at the same time. So, I don't think it's fair to compare that game to that game at all. But what I do see for that game is potential. You know, I think they added those open worlds because they're trying to gauge it, to gauge users' reaction. And I think fairly has been fairly positive for most gamers. Those open that open world, that small bit of open world. Don't be surprised if gay six if gay uh, gear six gay six right gear six is fully open world. Boy, this shit's gonna that shit's gonna hit. On Twitter snippet. Don't be surprised if there's a potential for Gear 6 to be fully open world with a whole bunch of shit in between, you know, which I think would be dope. I think it would work. The only thing is it can't be bland. It can't be bland with the same scenery over and over. They have to make it unique. They have to make it, you know, different traversal areas, mountains, cities. Everything, you know, kind of like a Days Gone type of open world, but you go everywhere, unique, unique areas, 
unique battlegrounds. You could walk into any building, any, you know, you could be ambushed. That's one thing. The two open world sections, as you're flowing through it, which makes sense. I can understand why, because you're on that skiff. So obviously you're not going to fight because it wasn't designed for that. But the need to design it kind of like open, like kind of like Days Gone or Red Dead to where any moment you could be ambushed, you know, by saying by the locust or whatever. And big battles and all that stuff. It could work. If they did it, you know, big open world, the whole environment is just dangerous. It could work. And I think it will be, I think that will take that gear, that franchise to, to uh, another level, honestly. I think it'll take another level. So overall, 8.5. I, I saw a few glitches. There was a couple of times I had to reload the game because um, of glitches. But I think that's common. You know, these games are like 50, 60 gigs. Sadly, that's going to be a trend. I wish it wasn't. Uh, but nothing game-breaking for me. I just reloaded it, restarted it, and boom, right? There is one major complaint I do have, all right? Because I played on experience. For those of you that play on experience and maybe even insanity, the AI is dumb. And what I mean, not the, not the enemy AI, because the enemy AI is pretty smart. Your players, your characters' AI is dumb. Jack is an idiot. Dell's an idiot. JD's, they're all idiots, all right? There's one area, right, where Jack has to carry this liquid, and you have to go back and take it to your skiff, but, you know, a whole bunch of locusts are attacking you, right? Or they're attacking the liquid, right? This little cell, whatever. And uh, Reunion knows what I'm talking about. It says 100%, right? Um, if, the, if that little thing goes to 0% and blows up, everyone dies, right? So if you were to play with your boys, co-op, right? One player will probably be controlling Jack, right? Obviously, the player controlling Jack would wait behind because we're trying to escort Jack into safety. So Jack, if you control him, you would be in the back hiding while we fight the locusts. Nah, not the computer. In experience mode, Jack is like leading the charge. He can't fight. He's carrying this liquid, and he all up in the mix. And I'm like, so everybody's just attacking him, and I have to go John Rambo to kill everybody before they kill him, which was so frustrating, you know, because I think that's so stupid. Like, it doesn't make sense. The AI should know to do, right? The part where you have all four players with you, you have JD, you have Dell. You have Jack, you have that Farrah guy, right? And then it's you. So it's like five people. It's like all of you, right? Something happened? Oh, shit. What's up? Everybody's like, yo, rest in peace. Oh, what happened? Something, something, something happened? <laughs> oh, shit. He said they got him. Oh, Lord. Yeah, crash or stream stream went offline? What the fuck? Yo, I think I think Aaron Greenberg is trying to shut me down. Yo, Aaron Greenberg is trying to shut me down, dog. We can't be having that. We can't be having... All right, so what's the last thing you heard? Aaron Greenberg is trying to shut me down. Nah, we're not playing that. You know, Windows... Windows to what? Windows trying to do an update? Nah, we're not doing no update. And there it goes. What the fuck? You know what's funny? I can see y'all chatting. <laughs> How the stream shutting down? I still you still y'all chatting. Hold on, let me do this. Let me do this. <laughs> you skipping like Microsoft skip games? Oh, what the fuck? I got this hard wire. It should be. It should be clean. Don't do this to me. All right. How are we looking now? Man, this is so wrong. Hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to learn today. You be fucking with my shit, man. Damn. Can't they let me live? A dude like me, can't they, can't they just let me live? Can I do my stream in peace? A dude like me just wants to stream in peace. I 
I'm good now. Man, skip this. Hold up. I just want to stream in peace, man. I just want to talk to my peoples. My peoples need this. Don't do this to me. Remember this? Google be doing the stadia bullshit and I got to pay for it. All right, here we go. Stream health. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna leave it alone. All right, all right, all right. Okay, we're gonna go back. Yeah, I'm using Streamlab OBS. All right, so we back. We good. We're gonna go with this. All right, so where was I? Where was I at? Emperor Black Eye Laugh. You're using OBS? Yeah, I'm using Streamlab OBS. All right. Long story short, because I don't know where I was at. Good game. Eight point five. AI pissed me off, the character AI, but overall, if you haven't played it, especially if it's, it's only a dollar, definitely worth playing for a dollar. I beat it, definitely. Um, for you multiplayer heads, solid multiplayer, all right? But let's talk about the three million players, right? Is it good? Is it bad? Microsoft bullshitting, fake news. Should Zaire be banned from PlayStation Nation for hyping this dog shit? <laughs> Listen, I think, it's, I think it's time that we realize one thing about Microsoft, right? That what they are now selling, and we have to accept this. This is just something in turn. What I mean by accept is... I don't mean why, I don't mean by you have to accept this as in you have to buy into it. You have to put your money down in it. It's just, just from an industry standard, just from knowledge and understanding gaming. And if you see me look on the corner, like right now, it's because I'm looking at the chat, so I apologize. You know, trying to keep up with certain comments and what people say, right? But we should accept that at this point, that Microsoft, Microsoft's platform, Microsoft what they are selling now and what they want to sell and what they want to see be the success of Xbox is Game Pass. Game Pass is Xbox. That is what Xbox is now. It is Game Pass, all right? Anything else outside of it, the hardware are just devices to push Game Pass, all right? I think it's time... We accept that in terms of acknowledgement. Not accept it as buy into it. If you don't want to buy into Game Pass, if you don't want to buy a console whose model is subscription, then don't. You know, go PC, go PlayStation, go Nintendo. No one's trying to force. When I say accept it, it's not me telling you you will pay for Game Pass. That's what I'm telling you. I'm, maybe use the word acknowledge. Better word? Acknowledge? It's better, it's time that we acknowledge that Microsoft, they are selling Game Pass. They are not selling hardware. They're not even selling individual games. They are selling Game Pass, all right? The games themselves are meant to support and push Game Pass. That is what Microsoft is now selling, all right? They're going to release Scarlet, right? Because they know there's people that like Xbox hardware, but they're making that hardware with the intent that you play Game Pass on that hardware. If you don't want to buy Xbox hardware and you're a PC gamer, they intend to get you on Game Pass on PC. If you're a phone gamer, through xCloud, they're going to try to get you to play Game Pass on your phone and tablet. Any which way they could get you on Game Pass, they want you on Game Pass, all right? They'd rather see Gears push Game Pass subscription as compared to Gears selling separately. Now, I'm sure they appreciate, because you're not going to get everyone on Game Pass, right? 
so they appreciate whatever sales they could get from Gears. But they're more focused on what Gears can do for Game Pass. That is their focus, right? So while some people may consider Gears 5 having 3 million players over the weekend as a flop because the game is available for a dollar, meaning between two platforms, Xbox and PC, you can play this game for a dollar. So why only 3 million out of so many people? Like money is not the barrier. It's only a dollar, two dollars at the most, right? Why hasn't it hopped on more? Microsoft sees it as how much more subscriptions increased because of Game Pass. And that's it. Their metric of measure is not the sell of the games. It's not the sell of the consoles. But how many people can subscribe to Game Pass. And this is probably why they're going to fully support even next gen. They're still going to support the One X. They're still going to support the One S. And they're going to still support the, the Xbox One. They're going to support all those platforms because all those platforms are potential Game Pass subscribers. And that's what it's all about. Microsoft's new vision for success is Game Pass. It, their vision of success is not how many $60, how many copies they sold Gears of War for 60 bucks, how many copies they're going to sell Halo Infinite for 60 bucks, how many copies of these indies or whatever. It is none of that. Right, they are 100% locked in as Game Pass. That is what they're selling. They are selling Game Pass. Even like the advertisements, they don't even mention the console no more. They say, "Oh, look at Gears of War Five, played on Game Pass." They are selling you Game Pass. Xbox Gaming is Game Pass. Matt Piscatella of MPD broke down his impression of the future of gaming, or at least for next gen, where he says Microsoft is full-blown subscription, and that is their focus, that is what they're advertising, that is what they're selling to gamers, Game Pass. Sony is the console primary, you know, driven, the, the main point of the strategy with a subscription service on the side, you know, not the main point, but something on the side. The main point is the console, subscription on the side, right? And Nintendo, full-blown mobility, playing their first party, you know, and focusing on their own Nintendo, trying to build up and release all their Nintendo legacy titles for you to play. So three different brands, each has their own strategy, right? And I say that's a good thing. Diversity and the brands being unique, I think is a good thing. Because what that does is the people who want to play their console platform. And then, of course, you got the PC, right? The, the high-end, powerful, you know, machine, right? If you look at all these platforms, they're going to cater to individual people based on their models. And I think that's a good thing. Because that's consumer choice. You want your traditional console, big blobs of exclusives, big third-party support, you know, PlayStation. You want the platform that gives you console-quality games on the go, portability, great first-party, a lot of fun titles, off-the-wall titles. You got Nintendo, right? You want a platform where you get primary focus on subscription base. You got a lot of games for a low monthly cost. You got Xbox. You know what I'm saying? Game Pass. And then finally, you want, you know, high-end, 100% freedom, free online, the best graphics, the best frame rates. You choose how you want to play. Map packs, DLC, downloadable improvement games, mods, all that stuff. You got PC. Each platform will give you something unique. Based on their own vision, it's on you to decide what you want to buy. I don't see a problem with that, you know. I know the main concern with, with Xbox, and a lot of gamers have this concern with Xbox, is how is Microsoft going to make money when a game 
a big AAA game that should be sold for $60, that should have been bought by 3 million people for $60, ended up being given away for a dollar, and a lot of the people only played it for a dollar. They didn't spend the 60 bucks. How is Microsoft going to recoup that? The way I see it, they are losing a little bit and hoping to gain a lot more in the long run, right? This is their strategy, okay? The majority of console owners, right, are casuals, and they only buy maybe one game a year. They don't buy a lot of games. The people who do buy a lot of games are the hardcore, right, which is the smaller sector. The bigger group, they may buy one or two games a year. That's about it. They really don't invest a lot, right? Some of them don't even buy games. They borrow games from other people, right? Or they even get used games, right? So not, so even the ones that buy used games, yeah, they're playing games, but Microsoft, no company. The publishers don't see no money from the sale of used games, right? So I think Microsoft is banking on if they could get all those millions of users who normally don't buy games, who normally go out and buy used games or get hand-me-down games, right? If, because they're just not going to go out and buy $60 of games two, three times a year. They're just not going to do it, right? But if you could get all those millions of people, right, and they could be like, you know what? We don't buy three, four, sixty dollars games. We usually go to the store, buy ten, five dollar used games, ten dollars used games, or we see if we could go on Facebook or eBay, buy used games from other people. But if you could convince those people to spend twelve, fourteen bucks a month, and they have access to two hundred, three hundred games, a lot of those users that would normally just go out and get used games or hand-me-downs. They could be like, well, you know what? I don't have to get hand-me-downs. I could spend 14 bucks a month and play a lot of games. I'm cool with that. I think Microsoft is gambling. If they could get all those people, that will not only make up for the loss of $60 game sales, but it's going to surpass $60 game sales. You know, if they could get all those casuals to be like, eh, I could rock with 14 bucks a month, given how much content you show me on, you know, on the application, they will make a lot more money, right? The big concern is making sure they stay subscribed month after month after month because it's not going to work if they see one game, they subscribe for one month, pay $14, and then unsubscribe, and then they just wait a couple of months for the next game. That's not going to work. Microsoft is going to have to, through coordination with third party and their own first-party studios, constantly announce new games month after month after month. Whether it's games from third party, it could be multi it doesn't have to be exclusive. But they need more third party support, they need more third party to jump on board and be like, hey, we got this game, we got this game, we got this game. Constant new announcement of games, and then Microsoft, in between those dull periods where third party is not gonna release a game on Game Pass, Microsoft insert a lot of titles, indoors games, I mean in Game Pass. So that way the audience constantly sees games after games after games, new games, new games. And that will entice people to stay subscribed because there's always going to be something new, right? Also on top of that, try to get games with lasting content, whether it's big um, role-playing games with DLC or multiplayer games. Something that people won't drop because it's going to take a while to beat. If, if Microsoft is able to pull that, potentially Game Pass could be successful, right? Now, here's the thing. The reason why Microsoft is going this route, because the traditional console route is not working for them. And, when, and you have to ask, did it ever really work for them? Take the OG Xbox. It got thrashed. By the PlayStation 2, only sold like around 25 million, but it made a name for itself, right? With Halo, with Halo, Halo 2, Forza, Fable, it did make a name itself. It puts itself on the map. But as far as the big console everybody got, majority of people didn't even know what Xbox was at the time, right? Only the hardcore. Then 360 came out, right? Great era for 360, lots of games. It was able to pull games that were once exclusive from PlayStation 3, pulled it over to Xbox. So Xbox started getting Devil May Cry, got Final Fantasy, great gen for 360. But when you look overall at the gen for 360, it sold 80 million, right? 
and around 800 million games. Um, last I checked, it was like almost 900 million, 800, around 800 to 900 million games, right? Success, right? But the PS3, which was considered a, a, a failure of a gen for Sony, also sold 80 plus million, just like Xbox, but it sold over 1 billion games. So in the end, PlayStation 3 sold more games. So think about that. Xbox 360 sold around close to 900 million. PlayStation sold over a billion. PlayStation 3 sold over a billion. So the console that failed, or at least in the eyes of Sony and gamers and industry, that was failure, still ended up selling more games. Um, than the 360. Which I found that interesting. And now we look at Xbox One. Total disaster this gen. It was just a mop-up, right? So when you really ask yourself, is the traditional model really working for Xbox? Has it really worked for that, for that brand? And I think this is why Microsoft is all in on what you gonna call it on, on Game Pass subscription. This is why I think they're all in on Xbox being Game Pass. So every game that Microsoft releases, remember, when they release Halo Infinite, sure it's gonna be a big spectacle, Halo, 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 but the Trojan horse of Halo is push Game Pass subscription. That is Halo Infinite's job. How can we get more, or how can Microsoft get more Game Pass subscribers? And they expect Halo to push that level. And I'm pretty sure they're going to try to make Halo Infinite Multiplayer the best that it's ever been. I'm pretty sure they're going to try to recapture the Halo 3 hype. Where people play Halo 3 for years. From the day it launched, people were playing that game two, three years. It was always one of the most played games year over year over year. The only game that was able to bust it down to second or third most played was Call of Duty because Call of Duty during that time was the hot shooter, right? But nothing else was topping, you know, Halo. And I'm pretty sure they want to recapture that with Halo Infinite because if they can and Halo Infinite comes out with a multiplayer that people just have to play all year long, guess what? You're going to stay on Game Pass, you know? So I know they're going to go hard on trying to, uh, whatchamacallit, make Halo Infinite multiplayer the best that it could be, right? And I'm sure they're going to go after a lot of games, right, where they can insert constant content, constant DLC, just to keep those games alive. Because, again, if they could keep games alive to where you'll stick to it at least two, three, four months, you're going to stay on Game Pass, you know? So they got multiple strategies. I'm sure they're implementing multiple strategies to have the very best multiplayer. They're going to try to get third party, especially those with, third, with multiplayer. And they're going to try to get the games that are accessible to where planned DLC content is in the works. Everything to keep you stuck on the subscription service so you can enjoy consistent content month after month after month. And that's what they're going to do, right? Ravenflow, MS needs to reveal sub numbers for a GPA SAP. I think they're going to hold it until they hit the right number. Because it's advertisement. You know, when you release numbers, you try to release numbers because of advertisement. You want to project a positive image. And I don't think they're there yet. Not to where they want. I think there was a huge, there was a huge spike of subscribers because of, of uh, Gears 5. Especially that deal where they had $2 for two months. I signed up for two months. I think they're going to wait it out after two months when it expires and see how far it drops, which makes sense. Because let's say right now you're at 5 million subscribers, right? Let's say it bumped up to 3 million because of Gears 5. It just jumped, right? You're like, wow, we're at 5 million. But after the two months, it drops back down to like 3 million because 2 million people, you know what I'm saying? They're going to see after the two-month period of that $2 deal, how many people fall off, how many people stay subscribed. So they have to, little by little, see the balance, the numbers balance. Because right now, if they report numbers, it will probably be decent. Let's say they might report 4 million. But then two months later, if it drops down to 2.8 million, that's a loss. 
and that could be projected. And the only reason why it would be a loss is because people did not re-up. So that would look bad for Game Pass. So that's why I don't think Microsoft is going to release numbers anytime soon because it's going to go up and down, up and down. Every time they push out a dollar deal, it's going to go up. Once the month expires, it's going to drop down a little bit. So they're going to go over time. We probably won't see numbers for like a good at least two years, a solid two years. Minimum, you know, I would say two years, you probably won't see subscriber numbers. They're going to want to hit a certain level that's leveled off, right? And that's it. Right? So what we're we talking about? Game Pass versus PS Now, right? Alright. But shout out to Ravenflow. Thank you so much for that super chat. Thank you for that question with sun numbers for GP. But we're gonna keep asking for it. People can keep asking for it. Right? Sleepy lights, man. Fuck all these games. I might go mobile. Oh, <laughs> you don't want that. So my wife plays mobile, right? Hardcore mobile gamer, right? And But none of the games she plays, she's bought. All of them are free to play, right? The problem is these games are pay-to-win type games. Because she plays these puzzle games, you know, match the jewels, match the colors. And once she gets to, like, level 200, 300... It gets so hard that, you know, she runs out of moves and then the game asks, hey, for a dollar, we'll give you 10 more moves. And, and my wife's like, damn, I could beat it in just two more moves. So she pays the dollar and she beats the level and then she goes on to the next level. That's how mobile gaming, mobile gaming primarily makes their money two ways. They don't make it through game sales. That's not where majority of the money is. Majority of the money comes from in-app purchases, pay to win pretty much, and in-game advertising. So if you've ever played a mobile game and you're halfway in a level, then all of a sudden an ad comes up and you're like, and then you're waiting for the ad to get done. And then you keep playing your game. It's those advertisements and the in-game purchases is where mobile gets the big money. Because mobile's making the big money, the console industry is trying to adopt that. That's why EA tried to do that whole Battlefront loot box, pay to win stuff, right? Because they're trying to adopt the phone model. Because they also make phone games. And they're making a lot of money in phone games, right? So they thought, hey, it's working on the phones. Let's do it on consoles. Let's do it on PC, right? Here's the problem. And this is why I try to... This is, I'll be honest. It irks me when I see console gamers, PC gamers, try to defend certain things in console gaming and PC gaming because phones do it. Oh, phones making million, billions. They're making so much more money. That's why Microsoft's doing it. We take pride in beating games. We take pride in playing games where it's your skill that beats the game. We take pride in playing multiplayer where your skills is what is the effort that where you could beat these games and you could claim victory, right? Phone gamers don't care about that. They go, they play their little puzzles. And when they run out of move, they make a decision. They try it over, or if they're just sick of that level, they pay, get a boost, boom. They move on to the next level. And phone gamers are cool with that. Phone gamers don't see pay-to-win model as an issue for them. They're very cool with that. That's what it is, right? So mobile gamers have no issues with paying a dollar to pass a board or paying a dollar to get a boost, you know, or pay $5 to get a collection of coins or whatever. They have no issues with any of that. They like that. That's what they enjoy. And you can clearly see the mobile industry is making lots of money off that model. Within that, you also got the in-game advertisements. Mobile gamers don't have issues with in-game advertisements. They're used to it. They're used to always seeing advertisements on phone because on Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff all the time. So to them, advertisement in games is not a big deal. It's something they're used to. These things we console gamers can't stand. Imagine playing a multiplayer, and then before the next multiplayer stage start, you have to sit and watch a one-minute advertisement on Viagra. And you're like, the fuck? Like, this has nothing to do with, well, what, does, what does this have to do with gaming? Like, what are you doing, right? It has nothing to do with anything. You just see weird commercials in your games, right? Or instead of, like, let's say, like, next gen, right? We're going to have SSD, solid state drives, right? Supposed to remove 
loading times, instant rendering, you know, Spider-Man had that, you know, uh, behind the closed doors comparison where on the PS4 Pro it took 15 seconds, 13 seconds to load Spider-Man, while on the dev kit it was 0.8 seconds, less than a second, instant loading, good to go, right? But imagine, granted, we don't got loading for the game, but we still got pauses because we have to see this 30 second commercial in the middle of a game, you know? You're about to fight a boss. Oh, one moment. Gotta see this commercial. On, you know, the ninja, whatever. Or get a cure coffee maker. And you're like, what the fuck? Walmart, $2.99 on Tide liquid detergent. Like, I'm about to fight a boss. Like, what are you doing? You know? Like, imagine we see some crap like that. We, we wouldn't handle that in console gaming, right? We already proved we don't like pay to win. Battlefront 2 got blasted because of that. So we're not playing that pay to win bullshit. So that's the main difference. That system's not going to work. You know, how mobile game makes its money and how console game makes its money is not going to work, right? So with Microsoft, we have that concern with if these games aren't selling at $60,000, they're beginning with a dollar. What does that mean for the future of Microsoft? I say right now, don't worry about it. Microsoft is going to put up the money to make the games. They might eat some loss if they have to, but they're going to go all in on Game Pass. They're all in 100%. The success of Xbox falls in the hands of Game Pass. And we just have to accept that, right? But with this what I'm showing right now, Game Pass versus PS Now. And while I show this picture, my man Lionel, Porak, is it isn't even fair to compare gaming to mobile. There's so many people with phones and spending money purely on microtransactions. I think it's like comparing Apple to Orange. I agree too. Because it's two different. Because like I said, a lot of people. So mobile gaming, and I agree. Lionel Buggin does have a point, my man. Because mobile gaming has the advantage to be on a platform where... The phones are popular, not just because the games, because of social media. Let's say that's really the number one reason why a lot of people have a phone is because of social media. To take pictures, to go on Instagram, to go on Snapchat, to go on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Uh, productivity applications, banking, all that stuff, right? YouTube, all that stuff. Everybody's doing that on their phones. And you're doing it on the go, right? And while you're able to do all that stuff... They get to play a lot of games that they don't even have to pay for. It's free. They just go to the store, download it, and they're playing, right? And then as they're playing it, they're enjoying it, and then the game gets harder and harder and harder, and they're on like on level 200, and now it's almost impossible to pass this level. So they say, fuck it, I'm going to just buy it, pay a dollar just to pass this level. It's only a dollar. But when you have so many people constantly dropping a dollar here, two dollars here, a dollar here, they're making bank, you know? It's, a, it's just a different thing for console. Console's not like that. When we buy a console, we're not buying it for social media or for Netflix and all that. Granted, it can do Netflix. It can do these apps. But that's not the primary reason. Because right here, you see the TV behind me. I have it on. The PlayStation's on, right? My big head was blocking it. But you see my TV behind me, right? And I have a TV in a man cave, Right? That TV has my Amazon Fire TV attached to it. That's where I do all the movie stuff. I don't do it on my PlayStation. I don't watch movies on my PlayStation. That TV is a smart TV, and I got a Fire TV. Some of you's got Fire Sticks, Roku boxes. You know what I'm saying? So when you buy a console, it isn't really because of the movie stuff, because there's cheap alternatives for that. It's for the games, you know? So I do agree with that. Great point, Lionel. All right? So this image right here is not really so much versus. It's, it's, it's acceptance that they will be going streaming. Xbox, we already know. Sony is already doing it. You know what's funny? Sony right here. Uh, yeah, right there. Bing, right there. PlayStation is already doing what Microsoft wants to do. That's what's funny about this. But the reason why it's not being talked about, because we in PlayStation Nation don't really hype it. We're not really hyping PS Now, 
right? For those of you that don't know, all right, let me explain something with PS Now. Because I get this all the time on Twitter. You know, in Twitter, I'm a jokester. I joke more on Twitter than I do on my own channel, most of you. Most of you know I don't, I don't do that much messing around on my channel as compared to Twitter. Twitter, I'm all out. Because there's just so many ignorant people on Twitter. I just have fun with it, right? But here I'm more mellow, right? But here's the thing about Twitter. So Twitter, you don't know how many times I see people say, oh, ponies or PlayStation fans are only against Game Pass because they don't have it. Wait till they get their own Game Pass, then they're going to love it. For those of you, and here's the thing, when you get the chance, those of you, Clip this out. Do a screen clip and put this on Twitter. Show this everybody because a lot of people on Twitter need to learn. We already have Game Pass and it's called PS Now, right? All right? Because with PS Now on the PlayStation 4, you can download over 340 PlayStation 4 games. There are over 340 PlayStation 4 games available and they are all downloadable. You do not have to stream those games. If you got PS Now on the PlayStation 4. If you're doing it on the PC, you cannot download and install it on the PC. It's not supported. You have to stream it if it's on PC. And I would imagine as PS Now expands to other platforms, you're not going to be able to download it there. The only option is to stream it. But on the PlayStation 4 console, you can install those PlayStation 4 games. That is Game Pass. It's Game Pass, through and through. In fact, it's more games than Game Pass. It's 300, I think I counted 342 PlayStation 4 games. And that's just PlayStation 4 games. Now, the PS3 games, you cannot install because the PlayStation 4 is not backwards compatible with PlayStation 3. So it's not possible to install the games on the PlayStation 4. But if it was, you would be able to play those games downloadable too. Right? That is Game Pass for PlayStation. Subscription service, be able to play a huge selection of games, download it, install it, and play it on your console. That is Game Pass for PlayStation. Through and through. But a lot of people don't know. Why? Because PlayStation Nation don't really talk about it. Not the crumb side, not the ones that are into console wars, not the big PlayStation channels. No one in PlayStation really talks about PlayStation Now being able to download digital game. And there are some big AAA PlayStation 4 games on there. You could play Bloodborne. There's even 2K18 in there. There's Metro on there. There's a lot of games on there, right? They don't do day and day, right? Some people say, well, that's not Game Pass because it doesn't do day and day. It's still Game Pass. The only thing you can make the argument is Game Pass is better because they have day and date first party support. So the argument isn't that they're not the same. They are the same. Just you can argue that one is better at it. That's the difference. So PlayStation Now is Game Pass, right? We just don't really care. We, we're not interested. You know, when people got PlayStation, I think the mindset for PlayStation owners is, Sony, give us the big quality games. We will pay the 60 bucks. We have no issues paying 60 bucks. Just give us the quality games. We will buy them. And that's it. Get the best third-party support. Try to get exclusive content on those third-party games. We will pay the 60 bucks. And that's our mindset. When we buy a PlayStation, we want big quality games. We want the best third-party support. We want exclusive content. You will get our $60. No problem. All right? The mindset Xbox gamers are developing is Microsoft... Keep pushing content on Game Pass. I will subscribe to your service. I have no issues paying 14 bucks a month to play all these games. Nintendo gamers, they like the portability. Hey, Nintendo, get these third-party games because we want to play these games on the go. They don't care if it's 720p, 30 frames. They don't care about none of that. They just want to play these games on the go because they like having control of games and being able to play everywhere, right? That's their mentality. And PC gamers... They want to max out shit to like 9K, 300 frames. And then apply nude mods. That's the PC game. That's the future. That's where it's going, right? Now, as far as 
the two streaming servers between these two, right? Game Pass is the forefront for Microsoft. I think PS Now is like the side chick. It's the potato. It's not the steak. You know, you go to uh, a restaurant, a steakhouse, you got your T-bone steak, got your baked potato, a little bit of vegetables, you know, corn on the cob, got your wine, or you got your soda, or whatever your favorite beverage. Well, the steak is the PlayStation. It's the exclusive taste. It's the best tasting. It's the premier meal of the plate. And then you got your baked potato with a little sour cream and some butter. That complimentary, that's where PS Now comes in. That's that baked potato. They go together well. They're delicious, right? But that baked potato doesn't match that T-bone. Got that medium rare taste, whatever, or however you like to cook it. That's that steak. The console's that steak. It's juicy. Got garlic butter. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or for those of you that are more into ribs, got that big baby back ribs. Slap down with that barbecue sauce. You know, meat falling right off the bone. That's that console right there, right? But that side dish, you got that corn on the cob, nice and cooked, buttery. Woo! You know? But that corn on the cob don't match them ribs. But you still want it. That's that PlayStation now. It's that side dish. Good, complimentary. But hey, you know, to all my Latinos out there, my Boricuas, hey, it's that panin. You know, it's Thanksgiving. You got that panin. You got that roast pork in the oven. Woo! But of course, you got that aroco gandule. Right? That, that aroco gandule is banging. Right? That's that PlayStation now. But you ain't fucking with that panil. You know what I'm saying? You cut into that roast pork. That meat's just ripping apart. Come on. That's the console. Right? The side dish is the PlayStation now. And I think that's how they're going to handle it. Everybody's like, damn, I'm hungry, right? Woo, I'm going to be making some ribs this Friday. I might go live on Twitter. Showing you how. In fact, I might do that today. Check me out. I might, I'm going to prep some ribs today. And I might do it live on Twitter. So check that out. Because I'm going to cook me some ribs on Thursday. So I might, I might do a live feed on Twitter. It might be interesting, right? So anyway. But that's the vision, right? For Microsoft, Game Pass is the stake. Same description. You got that sirloin, all that stuff. But the sirloin for Microsoft is Game Pass. And ain't nothing wrong with that, all right? Now, for those of you, we got to be honest. This is Sony right now. This is their stuff. The look I give my sister when she speaks Spanish. The huh? <laughs> Look at PlayStation now, right? This image is like 2012, 2013, or, or 14. So Sony always planned to put as much games, PlayStation library games, on many devices, right? The only question is that we always wondered, is PlayStation now going to be the forefront in gaming, right? I say at least for next gen is not because the games are selling so much natively on the console. Sony's making way too much money because of their console strategy, right? A lot. They are blowing past everybody. The only other company, there's only one company doing better, and that's Tencent, and that's because they got China on lock. They're big in mobile. They're huge in that, right? But in terms of console gaming, right, the traditional console gaming, there's none bigger than Sony. Not EA, not UB, not Activision. They make way more money than them. They make more money than Microsoft. They make more money than Nintendo. Sony is the biggest, right? And it's because, it's funny, it's because they learned their lessons from PlayStation 3 to put PlayStation 4 in a position of success. And I don't think even Sony anticipated how successful PlayStation 4 was going to be, right? And that's what I think, at least for the next gen, they're going to ride and they're going to, they're, going to re, they're going to try to repeat what they did with the PlayStation 4, with the PlayStation 5, and make it bigger, better. More games, more profit, more money. They're just going to do better, right? And I see that's the future for that, right? And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much my thought. 
Are there going to be streaming wars? Now, here's another thing. There's going to be so much streaming services. Because you got Stadia. They're going to push a game streaming service, right? Amazon, rumored to have their own streaming service. EA, rumored to have their own streaming. In fact, they already sent out invites. EA, if you didn't know, EA already sent out invites um, to their streaming service. So it's happening. You'll be soft looking into their streaming service. I don't think it's going to be that far off to see Take Two streaming service. Sleepy Lights with the super chat. He says, as a PS fan, am I wrong for thinking The Last of Us is garbage and Xbox Gear is the same? I don't care about Nintendo games. They all sell trash besides the SNES games. All right, I'm going to be serious. No, you're not wrong for thinking The Last of Us is garbage. It may not be your game. That's the thing about PlayStation games. We are so diverse and so many people buy PlayStation for different reasons. One game, you might think, in your case, um, Gravity Rush is probably one of the best games on the platform. And that's okay. That's the whole point of being diversity. To spread so many different games out on the platform that you'll find a game that caters to you. So if you don't like The Last of Us, it's all good, you know. But you're still a PlayStation fan, and it's probably because there are games that you find amazing. And it doesn't have to match anybody. And that's all good, you know. You know what I mean? So, I say that. Um, where was I? Da, 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 da. Damn! Good question, Sleepy Lights. That made me lose my train of thought. Okay, uh, fuck. I think I'm... Damn, I might as well just cut it to Q&A. Yeah, I already gave my gears a review. JD, give you a quick glance. 8.5, great game, must play. I think everybody should at least. Especially if it's for a dollar, definitely play it. But I did already give a full review. Oh, uh, man. Sleepy lights. You made me forget. Made me lose my train of thought. But you know what? Let's do this. Another Q&A session, right? Let's give it up. Start pushing the questions out in the chat. Live Q&A. I think you guys enjoy that. I enjoy it because everybody gives. There's been last couple of the last two live streams have been pretty good with the Q&A. All right. All right, somebody says you were talking about PS Now is all on platform. Okay, got it. Thank you. You're the man, Ellis. Thank you so much. So for next gen, PlayStation Now is going to expand. But I think, like I said, it's just going to be the side dish, right? PlayStation 5, they're going to re- try to repeat the success of PlayStation 4 because it put them on the map. So I think they're going to try to redo the strategy because it's not broken. In fact, it made them the most success they've ever made ever in gaming. So it just makes sense to try to repeat it and try to even do better with that model. They're still going to expand PlayStation now because they're going to have that groundwork laid out. But don't expect Sony to advertise PlayStation now as a replacement for the PlayStation 5. They're going to want you to buy that PlayStation 5. And they're not going to try to have PS now interfere with that. All right, but we'll see how it is. All right, so questions. Um, but thank you so much, Illis, for jogging up my brain. Um, Emerson Charles, thank you too. You also did that. Uh, did you see Jim Sterling video on YouTube? No, I saw the link. I just did not get around to see that. But I have the link. Somebody linked it to me in a DM. I just didn't get around to see the video. So if a game costs 50 million to make and Game Pass is only a dollar and you have a 3 million fan base, guess what? 47 million wasted. SS9, that is a legit point. All right? That is a legit point. Okay? And I'm not disagreeing with you at all with that point. 100% true. The math is true. All right? But what Microsoft is hoping that those people that only paid a dollar they stay subscribed to when the service now converts to $14 a month and they just stay with that system. And more and more people grow as subscribers who are willing to pay $14 a month. So now it's just a consistent drip of $14 a month, especially from subscribers that hardly buy games at all. And the ones that do buy games, they mostly buy hand-me-downs used games because they're like $10, $15. They go to eBay or they get it from their friends, or the, you know, things like that. And they don't pay $60 at all. They'll go a whole generation, and they don't buy not one game. 
at least from Microsoft or from the store because they're getting it either used, trade-ins, from flea markets. They'll find a way to get cheap games, right? And none of the money goes to Microsoft and the publishers. At least if they could convince those, like, hey, you don't have to do all this work for $14, $10 games. You could just take those $14 a month and pay it through Game Pass. And I think that's why they're not worried about Gears losing money because Gears' job is to bring in that Game Pass subscription. Um, you should give Control a try, Pete Rock. It's good as fuck and the combat is fun. Man, Riney, man, you're killing me, man, because I don't trust. Everybody keeps telling me, yo, you should try to wake. It's dope. I try to wake. It sucks. People tell me, yo, you got to do Control. It's dope. I play Control. It sucks. I don't like Remedy. Remedy, don't, they don't make the games appeal to me, bro. Oh, you're killing me. Everybody keeps saying play Control. I'm afraid, I swear to God, if I play Control and I hate it, oh, I'm going to lash out. I'm going to curse everybody. I'm going to do that Puerto Rican voodoo on ya. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't like Remedy, man. I don't like their games. All right? JD, can you give me a prediction how you think each platform will work on next gen? Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo. I kind of did that already early in the podcast, maybe like 10, 15 minutes ago. But quick rundown. Sony, they're going to focus on their console. PlayStation will be the side dish. Yeah, they'll talk about it. They'll add more legacy games. They'll add more PlayStation 4 legacy games because we'll be in the next gen of PlayStation 5. I don't see them putting day and day PlayStation 5 games because PlayStation 5 will be their main focus for the next generation. Microsoft, their strategy, Game Pass. That's what they want. Any game they come out, it's to push Game Pass subscription. So they're going to push for multiplayer games. They're going to push for games with DLC content. They're going to go after third party, especially third party that make games that are sustainable either with DLC or multiplayer because that's the key. The key is to get subscribers but the key is to, to keep them. So how do you keep subscribers? Keep providing content to where they have to stay so they can keep playing the content or give them multiplayer games that they can keep playing month after month after month. But in order to play the multiplayer game month after month after month, they're going to have to stay subscribed. All right? That's my prediction. Then Nintendo, I think they're going to keep going after the hybrid. The next Switch is going to be a more powerful hybrid. Because I think they got it where console quality games, but on the go. And I think there is a huge market for that where they want these big console quality games, but they want it mobile. They want it on the go. And that's my prediction for those three. Um, let's see. We got. Oh, we got. We got. We got. Let's see. We got. Uh, I heard people got $2 for two months. I'm one of them. You know, and I already unsubscribed. But we'll see. Other people will stick on. Netflix got $30 billion in debt and got like $300 million plus subs. Microsoft still chasing 2 billion imaginary gamers. That's true. Netflix is in debt. And I don't see how. And they just stay. I don't. I don't know. I don't, I don't understand how Netflix is still around. I don't. I just don't understand. I can't. I don't, and, and, and to be honest, I don't really track the movie industry. When I see articles like that, I read it, but I don't deep dive. Like, if it was a gaming studio or a gaming th- company, I would deep dive. But I'm not a big movie guy like that to even worry about it. So, to be honest, I'm not even worried about Netflix. It's still there. If they go away, they go away. If they're still around, they're still around. Um, you're not going to hate it, bro. Remedy <laughs> uh, last great game was Max Payne 3. Remedy didn't do Max Payne 3. Um... Max Payne 3 was under 2K, and I don't think Remedy did that. I don't think it was them that developed it. I think the last Max Payne they did was Max Payne 2. I could be wrong, but I don't think they did Max Payne 3. Gears 5 has microtransactions for executions and skins, $25 each. I think it's too much. Maybe they should recoup some money, do the game pass. That was brought up. Shout out to Cassie Gamer. Shout out to her. She showed it live. The skins animations are pretty expensive. They should be like a dollar. But they're pretty hefty price. You know? And I think that's how they're going to make a lot of money too. Right? What else? Alan Wake Quantum Break are really good. In my opinion, I, I didn't enjoy it. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, Mac Remedy didn't make Max Payne. Yeah. So, yeah. They didn't make past the game. Okay? P-Rock. If you're the head of Xbox, what changes would you make to adopt the next generation to make the brand successful? 
Oh my God. To be realistic. Woo. Woo. I'll say this. There's there's no going back on the decision of games going to PC day and day it's Steam. That decision is done. I will not take that away. It's over, right? It's all about Game Pass. But the one thing I would do is I would push, and I know Phil, he doesn't believe in this, but I do. I will go after exclusive content, timed exclusive third-party games. I will try to fight to get back the COD marketing rights, get that map pack back on Xbox, right? 30 days, right? I would try to go after Rockstar, G Grand Theft Auto 6, try to get timed exclusive single player DLC. I would go after big third party games from Ubisoft. I think that's the only move they could make, right? And if possible, try to get some of these big games day and day on Game Pass. A little bit harder, but I would at least try. Imagine if Microsoft was able to pull getting Call of Duty on Game Pass day and day. That would be fucking huge. That would be huge if they were able to pull that off. A lot of Call of Duty gamers, especially if they could do Game Pass Ultimate, where you get all the game map packs, and somehow Activision agrees to that, that's a wrap. A lot of people, the gamers that only play Call of Duty on PlayStation, I think they will leave. Because they will go... They would go to Xbox, sign up for Game Pass, pay only $14 a month. They get access to all the maps. They know they get to play Call of Duty year over year. And they get to play even more games. I'm ruthless like that. That's what I would do. I would go after the third party. There's no going back on bringing back exclusive to Xbox or no longer supporting to PC. They can't go back on that decision. So I would stay with those decisions. But I would go after them third parties and keep them away from PlayStation. That's what I would do. Um, and that's it. Um, with The Last of Us being the most anticipated game and the hype surrounding it, do you believe it will be the highest selling PS exclusive this gen? Potentially. The Last of Us 2 could body the industry in ways that we can't imagine. Because that game, I think the first one sold 17 million off the cuff. The Last of Us could just body the industry to where we're like, oh, shit. There's potential that The Last of Us could just take it to a whole new level. All right? Let me see what we got. Um, let's see. I can see some more questions. Yeah, so a lot of people are saying that Remedy made one and two but skipped out on three. So, yeah. Uh Gears 4 was okay. I liked the game, but Gears 5 is a lot better. It's a huge improvement. So I think the major change is not to put first-party games to Game Pass. I understand where you're coming from, but right now, Microsoft's strategy is that Game Pass is more important than the first-party games. So there's no going back, I think, right now. Microsoft's all invested I think if, let's say if I took over, I couldn't reverse that decision. It's, it's over. Microsoft is full-blown. This is the direction they're going. So what I would do is, what do I need to do to make it better? And me, I'm going after third-party games. I'm going to go out, and I know Phil doesn't believe in that, which I don't know why, but I'm going to go after them third-party games. And I'm going to go after Call of Duty. I'm going to go after Call of Duty. I'm going to go after Madden. I'm going to go after those games and try to get those games day and day. If we're going to throw Game Pass, I'm like, if Microsoft's like, hey, Porter Rock, we got to get this Game Pass. I'm going to be like, oh, you, you want this Game Pass? You really want this Game Pass? Then I need a blank check. I'm going to get you Game Pass. You want these subs? I'm going to get you these subs. Watch. I'm going to get you these subs. You want it? All right. We're going to do it then. You know? And Phil's going to be like, no, but we're going to be nice. Nah, dog. I'll be like, fuck Sony. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to be ruthless. I'm going to cause a whirlwind in this. I will be going after so many games day and day. Oh, shit. <laughs> I will be ruthless about it. 
But Phil's not that ruthless. He's like, you know, if you want to put your games in day, you can. If you don't, because you like it on PlayStation, that's okay. I would look at Phil like, man, you got to bleed green, dog. This is, we ain't doing that. I'll be calling Activision every day. That'll be me, though. <laughs> I'll be ruthless, right? Aaron Greenberg's probably looking at my stream and be like, yo, get me Porter Rock's number. It's on. If you were Microsoft, what studio would you buy to crush your competition next gen? What would make the biggest splash? All right. If I, if they, if Microsoft decided, you know what, Porter Rock, you need to sign the Microsoft contract. We're going to give you a salary of six high six figures. You're going to make this money. We're going to move you to Redmond. You're going to be driving that, you're going to be driving that, you know, that M6 BMW. We're going to get you that Austin Martin. And I'm going to be like, where is Microsoft? I, right. You want me to help you? I'm going to get that six-figure check? I. Right. This is what I would do. This is who I would buy. And I know there's hurdles and red tapes to do it, especially with Japan. There's a lot of hurdles and red tape with Japan. But we're going to get through these hurdles. We're going to talk to Japan. We're going to talk to Japan. And the first company I say we need to buy is from software. I would buy from software. Sega's too big, a little bit too hard, but I think fun software is doable. That would be my number one right now. That would be the first one. And I will do it because of this. Granted, they don't make games that sell three billion. I mean three billion, like 10 million, five million. They don't make those type of games. But what they do provide is a level of influence. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of prestige. Because From Software makes hard games and they make games with gameplay. Hours of content, challenging, hardcore gamers talk about it. It also sends a message that Microsoft, Xbox supports Japanese games. So it's more than just the studio, it's the overall image. Right? From Software makes incredible single player games. So that also shows the image that we support single player games. So just with phone software, I knock out a couple of narratives that will make Xbox look good. Narrative number one, we are about them Japanese games. Narrative number two, we make compelling single player games. Narrative number three, we're going to make some hard default challenging games that you're going to want to buy. Right? That's the first studio I will go after. I will go after phone software. And I know there's a lot of hurdles with Japan. But that's why we got lawyers. You know what I'm saying? We got Jacoby Myers or whoever. We got a lot of Italian lawyers that make millions of dollars on the Microsoft budget. Get your ass out there in Japan and figure it the hell out. All right? We want from software. They're going to be part of our studios. And, of course, their game is going to be day one on Game Pass. And they're not making games on PlayStation. That means no Bloodborne 2 made by from software. If they make Dark Souls... Not on PlayStation. Day one on Game Pass. With all the DLC. Sekiro Shadow dies three times. Not on PlayStation. Yeah, it's going to be on PC, but that's okay. It's day one on Game Pass. I'll be ruthless. You don't want me. You don't want Microsoft to pay me. PlayStation Nation, you don't want Microsoft to pay me. I will be ruthless. I will be ruthless. All right, what we got? Everybody's afraid. Everybody's like, delete this video. Um, what else? Um, they don't have unlimited budget, but their budget is at least four to five as much as it was four or five years ago. Oh, that's not a question. Um, from software will be an overkill, PR. <laughs> Hellspawn don't like that idea. Everybody's like, shut the fuck up. Don't give Microsoft any ideas, right? I just gave him an idea, right? Aaron Greenberg's like, He's like, you know, my man, my man Aaron Greenberg, you know, he out there, my man Aaron Greenberg out there, my man got the pad of paper, he's like, he's like with the pen, he's like, oh, Porter Rock said this, right, and then he's going to go inside the ballroom, gentlemen, I have a great plan, you know, it just came to me, you know, last night. You know, I, I was just eating some sushi, sipping some wine, playing some gears, and it just dawned on me. 
Why don't we buy phone software? You know, phone software, it will give us three leverages. It will give us, it will send the message that we support Japanese games. It will show that we support single player games. And we have great single player content. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> hey, we're going to give you a bonus, Aaron Greenberg, you know, for such a great idea. Motherfucker's going to get a Christmas bonus because of me. Bastard. That'll be me, though. Uh, all right. Here we go. What we got? What we got? Sega is only worth $5 billion. All right, so here's the thing. $5 billion may sound cheap, right? But it really isn't. All right. Like, for example, they paid $3 billion for Mahong, right? But Mahong had a small staff... And they have Minecraft, which is a super huge money-making game. You know what I'm saying? When you buy a company, developers, it's not just the games that you're buying, but you're buying everything that they own. You're buying the buildings. You're buying the debt, the manpower, the infrastructure. You're absorbing a lot of shit, right? And then when the company sells, they're not going to sell you at what is at value. They're gonna sell you. They're gonna sell the company at above value to make a profit. So let's say if Sega's worth five billion, then you're talking maybe a nine to twelve billion dollar deal. So that way the stockholders make money, because it's the shareholders that are selling it. So they're not gonna sell it to you at the value. It's gonna be a lot more, so they could come away with a lot of cash. So you gotta look at that. So they're gonna come away with a lot of cash. The company like Microsoft, they're going to absorb all of it. The debt, the infrastructure, the utilities, everything, the pensions, all that. So that's why it's not as simple as it seems, right? That's why it's easier to acquire smaller studios than the big studios that are primary um, big multi-plat studios. It's not as easy at all because there's a lot more than just the games. Um... What we got? Uh, da, da, da. All right. So, LSP Rock, any thoughts on new gameplay of Death Stranding by Kojima and the briefing trailer at TGS? I did not see it. That 50 minute stuff, I'll be honest, I didn't see it. When they announced they're going to show 50 minutes, I made the decision nope, I'm not doing it. I'm buying it day one. I'm a big Kojima fan, always been a Kojima fan. I've been a Kojima fan since, the Super, since Nintendo with the first Metal Gear. All right, I've been a big Kojima fan for a long time, so I'm buying his games. His game is bought. It's already done. It's over, you know. It's dead. They just don't know it, right? So when they talk about 50 minutes, I'm like, man, that's a lot of shit to watch. I felt it might spoil it. So I'm not, I'm not watching no new content from Death Stranding. We're close to November. We're already in September. October, November's around the corner. I'm not watching nothing. I'm not reporting Death Stranding. I'm not looking at clips from Death Stranding. I see streams, I avoid it. I'm, 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 that's it. I'm on a blackout for Death Stranding because I'm going to play it and, and I'm just going to enjoy it on this one. I wish Microsoft would listen to you on this subject. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, everybody laughing. You know, everybody right now are trying to, people are trying to strike this video so it could be removed from YouTube because they don't want Microsoft to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, here we go. Let's see. Bot's been crying all generation. Tell me about it. And it's funny. It's hilarious. Uh, from software, wouldn't want it to be owned by Microsoft. And, I, and, I, and that's true, all right? I'm just giving you something that I would try to do, and I would fight my hardest to get it done. It was just something I would do, all right? Bots, let's see. Um... Any thoughts on why? Did you see the briefing trailer, though? B-Rock, I'm, I'm on blackout. Death Stranding, blackout. Blackout. I ain't see nothing. I'm Bird Box. Sandra Bullock. You know, you know dudes be like, there's a new Death Stranding trailer. Nope. Not looking. Look at the gameplay for Death Stranding. Not looking, dog.
Got me. <laughs> you know, that's the only way. But I'm not taking off the blindfold. I'm on blackout when it comes to Death Stranding. I'm not watching nothing. Don't tweet me. Don't DM me. I'm muting. In fact, I'm going to put that as a mute word. I'm just not. That's it. I got enough. I'm good. I'm getting it. I'm playing it. I'm all in. I'm all in Death Stranding. What else? Oh, man. Oh, man, I can't get jiggy with a guy, throw poo and pissing on rocks. I'll wait for your review to see if I should spend my money. Now, you got to understand, a lot of people talked about that. Remember, the audience, this is, gamers got to understand the audience the game will show to. It will show to TGS, Tokyo Game Show, and those audience were Japanese. It's a weird culture in Japan. Listen, let me tell you how weird culture Japan is. There's a game show where a guy, where a guy, you have to finish a song, right? But here's the kicker. There's a girl jerking the guy off. Like, you don't see, like, the actual penis in the hand because they have him in a cubicle. But you see the girl, and she's stroking him, and the dude's trying to sing. He's singing some Japanese songs, I don't understand, but he's like, and he's trying to finish it. He has to finish it before he ejaculates. And the girl's just welling on his penis. Like she's up in there. Dog. You don't get that on American TV. Yo, you think I'm lying? Yo, it's on YouTube. It's funny as hell. And it's a, it's a show that they show on Japan. And it's like popular. You know, it's kind of like, you know, a singing contest. But the dude's getting jerked off. I'm not lying. I swear. I swear. Yo. There are stories that I could make up. This isn't one of them. This is not something that I have imagination to make up. Stephen King couldn't even make something like this up. So this, so I'm telling you, yo, look at YouTube. The dude's like, oh, he's singing some song and he just can't. He's like, some dudes couldn't finish. Yo, there was one video. The dude's like, oh, and like he busted. Yo, <laughs> yo, the show's a trip. So... <laughs> Yo, I'm telling you, Japan is crazy with their humor. It's it's hilarious, bro. They play tricks on kids with disabilities. Yo, there's a gif I show of of race. Um, so she has some type of chromosome. You know, she's like quirky. You know, she has. You know, that type of disability. So they have a race of these kids with that disability. You know, it's like a power walking race, right? And the winner is supposed to cross the finish line. But what they don't know is the finish line, the floor gives out. So once they cross the red tape, they're about to celebrate, but they fall through the floor. And these kids are have disabilities. You know, that's fuck, it's fucked up. It's fucked up what they're doing to these kids. So the, you see the kids riding and they're about to win. And they're like, yeah. And then all of a sudden they fall through the floor. I'm like, yo, this shit is fucked up. I'm telling you, Japan is different. Japan is different. So with Kojima's talking about making poop bombs and urine bombs, that's what they want to see. And they find that shit amazing. Doesn't translate well to the Western audience. The Western audience is like, what the fuck? But you got to understand, like, Kojima would not have done that at E3. That, that presentation would not have been at E3, right? A lot of people talking about the poop and whatever. You would have not seen that at E3. But at Tokyo Game Show, he's showing that. And that's just, it's crazy, man. Look at YouTube. I don't know what it's called. Look at Japan singing, you know, um, what you would call it, jerking off show. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Hilarious. Right? Port Rock, I wonder, I wonder, do they have a show about hookups at Strange Areas Gone Wrong? I don't know, man. But Japan, if they do, it's in Japan. What about Microsoft buying Mistwalker from software and opening up a Japanese version of initiative designed to steal the greatest Japanese talent ever? All those things are tangible. Main thing is with my promo for software is send a message that you support Japanese games. Because even if they don't buy in Japan, Western audiences buy Japanese games, right? Two, it sends a message that you support single-player games. And they're going to create some amazing games. 
For some software makes some games. They don't sell a lot. They sell two, three million, but they're bangers. Oh, uh, what else? Um, uh, what I mean is by that is like a show where you do your thing at some secluded area. If you get busted before you finish, you lose. <laughs> or like people who walk by. I don't know. That should be funny as hell. You know, like you're trying to get, you know, do your thing, and then somebody walks, hey, what are you doing? Oh, you lost. That'll be funny as hell. Ah, okay. That explains the gameplay. I get it now. Yo, I'm telling you. See, see the video. You'll see. And then that, that sums up Japan in a nutshell. When I lived there for three years, some of the weirdest shit I seen was in Japan. It is funny. Kojima's trolling with the second demo at TGS Day 2. He even said on Twitter. Are you saying Japan is the drunk dude at the party that pees on a carpet to be funny? I'm letting you know. That's them, bro. And Japan, no, Japan is the audience that enjoys the drunk dude peeing on the carpet. <laughs> they love seeing that shit. All right. Um, so, you know what I'm saying? What time is it? So, it's 10.53, almost two an hour and 36 minutes on the show. Thank you for the questions. Great questions. Um... Hey, if you're new to the channel, hit the like button. Subscribe. Appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for rocking out with me. This is your boy, Porter Rock 77 And I'm going to cut it right now. Hour 36 is good. I'm going to head up, finish my game. Right now, I'm playing Mass Effect Andromeda. Don't kill me. I'm trying to catch up to my backlog. It's all right. Definitely nowhere near as good as Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. But I like the space opera. I'm a sucker for space opera games. So, I'm going to do it. Right over to the people who rocked out on Super Chat. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I truly appreciate it. For those of you that took the time to hit me up with questions and Q&A, I truly appreciate it. It's good interacting with y'all. But again, as your friend, your only friend in these YouTube streets, I hope my information was good, all right? Check you out next time. But I'm out. Let's play these games. No, hold up. I'm going to go live on Twitter. I'm going to prep these ribs. I'm just going to prep it. All right? <laughs> I'll check you guys out. Peace.